I think the challenge that people face today is that they're constantly being uh, coerced uh, to give up their data, to rethink their decisions about withholding data, to make information available uh, that they probably wouldn't otherwise make available because of some opportunity that's presented to them. And when I, you know, I first noticed this a, a long time ago. Uh, I've, been, I've been at this for a while. And I thought, well, what, what analogies do we have for this? I mean, how do we understand people's innate understanding that they want to be able to control their data and at the same time they're constantly faced with these, with these decisions? And I said, well, you look at some of the big sort of regulatory challenges of our modern industrial society, you know, auto safety, our food safety. Um, consumers in the early days were often in very similar situations. I mean, cars were really dangerous. I mean, they're still dangerous, but they were really dangerous. And people sort of knew, you know, I guess at some level, uh, in the 40s and 50s, you'd buy a car, it was cool, it would go fast. Uh, but of course, there were no safety features, they were poorly maintained, you know, accidents were fatal. Um, and for a long time, people just had this sense about it, well, you know, they're cool and, you know, there's a risk with driving, you kind of get used to it. And uh, at a certain point, I think what began to happen in the conscience of American consumers is they thought to themselves, hold it, shouldn't I be able to you know, drive a car, use a product, get its benefit, and not face all these risks, right? In other words, how do we provide the benefits of new technology to consumers without exposing them to unnecessary risk? And then you look in the auto safety field and you see all sorts of things started to change. Um, and, you know, cars were built better, maintenance was better, safety features were adopted. But here was the key insight, and I think it was really... Ralph Nader, who helped people understand this. At the end of the day, it wasn't going to be the driver going to more auto safety schools that was going to make the driving experience safer, right? It wasn't going to be the driver who was told, if you're about to have an accident and someone's in the front seat, you need to swing your arm out and protect that person taking your hand off the steering wheel to prevent them from flying through the uh, windshield, right? This is actually how auto manufacturers before Congress in the 1960s explained safety practices for driving a car. You should do this if you're approaching an accident. And everyone nodded because that's what they had been taught. The key insight was to say it's not reasonable to place this burden on the driver. The burden has to be on the manufacturers. It has to be through regulation. And I think that's the big shift that we're going to see on the internet privacy front. At some point, people are going to say, you know, whether it's Facebook settings or Google Buzz or something else, they're going to say, it's just not reasonable for people, you know, to have to spend all this time trying to refigure out what their privacy settings were. Someone else is going to have to step in and say to these companies, people should be able to go online, use these cool services, and not have to spend so much time worrying about their privacy.